What's up Guardians? Profane here. Thanks for checking out the video. Today we're taking a look at one of the most overpowered Warlock builds available in Destiny 2 Lightfall. A new strand build that's not just fun to use. This build will seriously obliterate your opponents. This build features remarkable synergy and ability regeneration and features one of the most unique exotics Warlocks can use. The Necrotic Grips. If you've kept up with the channel, you know that I've talked a lot about these in the past. But now that Strand is here, the Necrotic Grips have finally found their proper place in this world. Because they pair up so damn well with the new Broodweaver Warlock. When damaging an enemy with a charged or uncharged melee, the Necrotic Grips intrinsic trait called Grasp of the Devourer kicks in and applies lingering poison damage to your target and when that target dies, the poison is then spread to nearby enemies. And then when those enemies die, guess what? More poison gets spread, if anything's still alive. This synergizes so well with the new Arcane Needle Melee, which has a total of three charges, allowing you to sling these strand needles at your enemies anywhere on the field, because these things have ridiculous range, and it only takes one to trigger the effects of Necrotic Grips. When an enemy is hit by an arcane needle, they become unraveled and spawn threads that seek out nearby enemies, dealing out lingering damage similar to that of necrotic grips, giving your enemies a double dose of elongated damage. We're also pairing this up with the strand grapple. While the other two strand grenades are strong and fun to use, I really prefer using the grapple with necrotic grips, since you're able to perform a striking melee at the end of the grapple. When performing the grapple melee, enemies become unraveled and take damage over time. This is going to exacerbate thanks to the necrotic grips. We're running the two only available strand aspects for warlocks called Weaver's Call, which spawns threadlings when you activate your rift, and Mind Spun Invocation. This will spawn three threadling eggs when performing the grapple melee attack. We're pairing this build up with four very beneficial strand fragments that are going to improve the synergy and functionality of our abilities, starting with Thread of Propagation. Powered melee final blows grant strand weapons unraveling rounds for eight seconds, applying damage over time to your target, and can also pierce anti-barrier champions. We're using Thread of Warding, which grants woven mail after collecting an orb. We'll go more in-depth later, but orb generation will be at a high level, since we're using heavy-handed and siphon mods to create orbs off of weapon kills and charged melees. There is a 10-point deduction in resilience, but we'll be okay because woven mail provides 30% damage resistance for 10 seconds. This does not ward off precision shots or melee attacks, but can be re-triggered every time you collect an orb. Thread of Warding synergizes very well with our next strand fragment, Thread of Transmutation. While wearing Woven Mail, Weapon Final Blows create a tangle and gives us an extra 10 points in strength, helping reduce the overall cooldown for our Arcane Needles. But most importantly, it provides a tangle, which is going to be extremely beneficial because we're also using Thread of Fury. Damaging targets with a tangle grants melee energy creating a wondrous chain of synergy between these fragments and our Arcane Needle. The Season of Defiance artifact has several key mods that will add to this build's synergy, starting with multi-siphon mods, granting you access to the Solar and Strand or Void and Strand siphon mods. We're using Untangler. When destroying a tangle with a Strand weapon, the tangle will suspend targets damaged by the blast. We're also using Allied Unraveling. Rapid final blows with strained weapons grant unraveling rounds. These effects are extended if nearby allies. The counterweave mod will also become very important to use in activities that feature champions. Threaded blast will be a great final column option, which creates a larger, more damaging blast when destroying tangles with strained weapons. Now let's talk about the armor and mods that we're using with this build. Since this build revolves around the use of arcane needles, we'll want to focus our armor stats as heavily towards strength as we can, as to reduce the cooldown of arcane needles. Recovery and discipline will also be beneficial to reduce the cooldown of the grapple and rift. For helmet mods, we're going with the void strand dual siphon mod, since I'm currently equipped with strand and void weapons. We're also using heavy ammo finder, and Heavy Ammo Scout. This increases the drop chance of Heavy Ammo, and when the Finder mod activates for me, 
It will also generate heavy ammo for allies, something that will be great to use in the raid. On our gloves, we're going with Heavy Handed, which will create orbs after kills with our Arcane Needle. We're also using Momentum Transfer, since we have three charges of melee, a melee kickstart mod is not going to help. So instead, getting 20% melee energy off of hits with our grapple will be far more beneficial. We're also using Font of Vigor. When collecting an orb, we get one stack of armor charge. While we have at least one stack of armor charge, we will receive a 30 point bonus in strength greatly improving the recharge rate of Arcane Needles. For the use of two fonts, you'll get 60 points of strength instead. On our chest piece, we're using Resistance Mods along with Font of Endurance, which provides 30 points of resilience when we have at least one stack of armor charge. For leg armor, we're going with Recuperation for Health and Invigoration for Melee Energy. Each will give 10% regeneration per orb. For the purposes of getting our abilities back, we're also going with Orbs of Restoration, which grants 10% energy to the least charged ability. If you'd prefer high weapon damage though, I would recommend going with one of the weapon's surge mods, based on what element type you're using. For class item, we're using Outreach, which provides melee energy when using our Rift. For Warlocks, this should be around 15%, with each class having a different level of impact. We're also using Distribution, which grants energy to all abilities, including Super, when casting the Rift near enemies. While the percentages are smaller, they do go across the board with each ability, giving just under 5% to each. And lastly, we're running Time Dilation. This is extremely important towards keeping buffs like weapon surges and fonts active as it increases the time that you keep armor charge from 10 seconds to 15, 18 for the use of 2, and 20 for the use of 3. Now that we've addressed the armor and strand subclass, let's talk about the weapons that will really synergize with this build. Weapons with traits that regenerate melee or grenade energy will be highly viable. Pugilist is a great weapon trait for this as a primary and heavy weapon will return 10% energy per kill and special weapons refund 20%. The Monte Carlo will make for a great exotic for that reason and the Traveler's Chosen will be just as beneficial as its gathering light buff regenerates energy for all abilities. Deepstone Crypt raid weapons that come with the Braytek Inheritance Origin trait will be great to use as these provide energy to all abilities per hit. Season of the Haunted weapons like the Callus Mini Tool, the Beloved, and the Drain all come with the 2 Excess Origin trait, which when your super is fully charged, you receive a boost to Discipline and Strength after each kill, reducing the cooldown for both your melee and your grapple. Since we have made fragment choices that hinge on the use of Strand weapons, the Quicksilver Storm will be a great option. Weapons with Osmosis will pair up very nicely as well, just like the Traveler's Chosen. Strand weapons like the Volta Bracket that come with the Hatchling Weapon trait can be very beneficial, as Rapid Final Blows or Precision Final Blows will create Threadlings at the target's location. I've also really been enjoying the performance of the Circular Logic Heavy Strand Machine Gun, which can roll with Envious Assassin automatically reloading this weapon, even overflowing it after kills with other weapons. And because we are using the Necrotic Grips, which grant a bonus in airborne effectiveness to Weapons of Sorrow, you can't discount the Thorn, Touch of Malice, or the Osteostriga as excellent top-tier weapons that will really synergize well with this amazing Necrotic Strand Warlock build. And with that, we've come to an end of today's video on a build that I am officially titling the Necrotic Needler. While Hunters have certainly been the rave so far because of some glitchy mechanics, Warlocks really did get the juice with Strand, and I'm absolutely loving the Strand Warlock builds. I'd love to hear your thoughts on the Necrotic Needler and the Strand Warlock as well, and what you're enjoying the most out of Lightfall so far. Let me know in the comments below, and thank you for checking out today's video. If you enjoyed and found it helpful, then be sure to hit that like button below, along with the subscribe button if you're new. Both are greatly appreciated, and both really do help support the channel. And until next time, Guardians, this has been Profane, wishing you all some happy hunting.